All right, we're going to go through a number of uh, examples of representing our electron uh, electrons on an atom. Okay, and we're going to do so by showing three different ways uh, to represent our electrons. So we have energy level diagrams, we have our quantum numbers, and we have our electron configuration. And I'm going to try my best to keep these color coded when we go through our examples. So energy level diagrams will be written in blue, quantum numbers in purple, and electron configurations in green. All right, so our first example, <clears throat> hydrogen, keeping it simple. Hydrogen has one electron. So our quantum numbers are pretty easy, straightforward. There's only one electron. We have n is equal to 1, l is equal to 0, m sub l is equal to 0, and we only have one electron, so we're going to give it a plus 1 half value. So those are our quantum numbers for the one electron of hydrogen. For our energy level diagram, we have our 1s level. <clears throat> we have one electron, so we have our single up arrow. And for our electron configuration, we take our lowest value here. We have one S, and to represent that we have one electron in there, we put a subscript here of our electron. If we were to read this electron configuration, we would say that this is the one S one. <clears throat> Now, what this, these electron configuration values mean? Okay. The one out in front is representing that n is equal to 1. s, so we have n equals 1. The s is representing l equals 0. And then the one here, that's the subscript, or superscript, excuse me, <clears throat> that's representing that we only have one electron in that orbital at that energy level. <clears throat> so let's look at an, another example, get a little bit more complicated. Let's look at helium, where we have two electrons. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for our two electrons, <clears throat> our quantum numbers, we have one set of n equals 1, l equals 0, m sub l equals 0. Then we have m sub s equaling plus 1 half, m sub s equaling minus 1 half. And that second electron will have the same n, l, and m sub l values. Our energy level diagrams, we have our 1s. We have two electrons in that level, so we have a spin up and a spin down. Our electron configurations, we have 1s2. Again, so the one out in front is denoting that n equals 1. The s denotes that l equals 1. And the 2 represents two electrons. All right, so although all three of these ways of representing electrons are useful, Okay. I'm going to stop doing our quantum numbers because we've seen 
Uh, we've done quantum levels or quantum numbers for n equals 1 and n equals 2. Um, I'm not going to ask anything beyond that. I also don't want to continue to repeat what we've already done. So I'm going to go ahead and just focus on the energy levels, diagrams, and our electron configurations. Okay. Although electron configurations are much easier, simplistic, straightforward, there are times where the energy level diagrams become important for us, and we'll see examples of that in Chapter 8. Okay. <clears throat> so let's move on to lithium. Lithium has three electrons. So very exciting. We get to promote to our second energy level. We have the 1s and then the 2s. We have three electrons, so we want to fill from the bottom up. So we fill 1, 2, and 3. Electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s1. So if we were to read this, we have 1s2, 2s1. Let's get a little crazy. Carbon has six electrons. Ooh, how exciting. Our energy level diagram. We have 1s, 2s, 2p. We need to fill in our, our six electrons. Okay, we need to fill from the bottom up, and we want to un, uh, we want our electrons by themselves until we have to pair up. So we have one, two, three, four. Okay, now I have two remaining electrons to get our total of six. So we want to go one, two. Okay. We don't want to do this. And we wouldn't say 1, 2, uh, because this violates Hund's rule. Okay, we want to keep electrons unpaired as long as possible. <clears throat> Our electron configuration is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. We have neon and silicon. Neon has 10 electrons. So if we put its energy level diagram, we have 1s, 2s, 2p. We have 10 electrons, so we have 1, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Electron configuration we have one S two, two S two, two P six. Silicon. Silicon has 14 electrons. So I have 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p. 14 electrons. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. This here would be referred to as the complete electron configuration. Hmm. 
we do have a condensed or an abbreviated uh, electron configuration. And what we do is we take our noble metal, <laughs> excuse me, noble metals, our noble uh, gases like neon. Okay, and hopefully you can see that this configuration is the same as our noble gas configuration here. So what we do is we condense that portion down and we say, all right, we're going to have the electron configuration of neon, and then we have our remaining electrons here. So we have 3s2, 3p2. This would be the abbreviated electron configuration. Most of the time you can get away with doing the abbreviated uh, electron configuration. Definitely on a test I will ask you to do at least one complete electron configuration. Um, so you'll definitely want to practice uh, representing electron configurations both ways. <clears throat> Your book goes through <coughs> those tables um, that show all of the electron configurations for all of the elements. Uh, so you have roughly, what is it, 118 elements have been uh, determined. So you have 118 practice problems uh, that you already have your answers to. Um, <clears throat> looking at our electron configurations, or excuse me, our, our energy level diagrams, okay, sometimes electrons are left unpaired. Sometimes electrons are all paired up. Remember we said this is spin up, okay, and then we have spin up and spin down, or you can think of it as clockwise versus counterclockwise. Okay. You could also think of this as uh, a magnet. Okay. If we have a magnet pointing up here, okay, there are no matching magnets here. Okay. And we have different vocabularies for that. So, <clears throat> if we have something that's paramagnetic, it's going to contain unpaired spins, whereas diamagnetic has no unpaired spins. Okay, so to determine between these two, you must look at your energy level diagrams. <clears throat> so paramagnetic is unpaired, diamagnetic is no unpaired. So contain unpaired spins, so we're going to have something that just has an up arrow. Diamagnetic, everything's going to be paired up, so it's going to look like that. So if we go back <clears throat> to everything that we have identified, with our energy level diagrams. <clears throat> we have hydrogen here has a unpaired electron, so this will be paramagnetic. Helium is all paired up, so this is diamagnetic. Unpaired, paramagnetic, unpaired, paramagnetic. <clears throat> Oops, all paired up. So this is diamagnetic. Silicon has unpaired, so it's paramagnetic. <laughs> Definitely there will be a question on the exam dealing with is this paramagnetic or diamagnetic. Okay, It's very simple, straightforward, don't make it more complicated than it is. However, you do need to remember that when you have unpaired spins, that's paramagnetic. When it's all paired up, that's going to be diamagnetic. <clears throat> Looking at our electron configurations. 
Okay. I said you need to memorize uh, the order that our orbitals go. Okay. You need to know this. However, a fancy thing about our periodic table is the periodic table tells us this order. Kind of cool. So <clears throat> if we look at our periodic table, we have <clears throat> our s orbitals can hold two electrons. Remember, hydrogen was 1s1. Now, <clears throat> helium's over here, but we could also put helium over here. Okay. If helium was over here, it'd have 1s2. Then we'd move down, we'd have 1s2, 2s1 for lithium. Beryllium would be 1s2, 2s2. <coughs> then, in the n equals 2 level, we also, so we have S, we also have P. Okay, there are three orientations to our P orbitals, PX, PY, and PZ. Each can hold two electrons for a total of six electrons in our P orbitals. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, if you look at neon, neon's electron, electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. In the n equals 3 level, we have 3s. We also have 3p. Then remember our next energy level up, we have the 4s level. And then we cover the 3d. Do you remember how many electrons can be held in the d orbitals? There are five orientations of our d orbitals. Each orientation can hold two electrons. So we have 10 total electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the shape of our periodic table, why it has these funky stair steps and the section in the middle, and then we pull this section out, is very particular for its electron configuration in that we can use the periodic table to determine an element's period or electron configuration. Okay. So here we have group 1a, group 2a. These all are in the s orbitals. In the center is our d orbital chunk. Okay. And then our f orbitals get pulled out. And then we have our p orbitals, except for helium, which is completing that s orbital. So our periodic table can tell us what our electron configuration is. So there are some examples here. What are the electron configurations for the following? Okay, worth going through these examples. You have the answers in your book. I would do it in the expanded or the, the complete electron configuration. I would also practice writing it in the condensed uh, electron configuration, so using the noble metals. And you'll have more practice on your sapling homework as well as the in-class activity, writing out these electron configurations. And in chapter 8, we will look at using the energy level diagrams to help explain some periodic trends.